Let us uh, <coughs> start uh, the last bit of our uh, lectures in this series. Uh, I am going to tell you about uh, Laplace's uh, derivatives, Laplace transform of derivatives. What does it mean? <coughs> so, basically, if I have a function ft, I know how to find its Laplace transform mostly. And now I want to see how the Laplace transform is related, Laplace transform of f is related with Laplace transform of f dash, that is the derivative of f. That's essentially what I want to talk about. So again, the proof is pretty straightforward, but we won't go into details of the proof. Uh, you just take it as a formula. What is the formula? If L of ft is capital F of s, that means Laplace transform of this function ft, if this is equal to uh, capital F of s, then Laplace transform of f dash, that is derivative of f, is s L Laplace of ft minus f of 0. Value of f at 0 becomes important. It's a constant becomes important. This is the formula. What does it say? Formula anyway, you have to mug up. This is easy. L of f dash t is s into l f t minus f0. Remember, l of f t is a function of s, capital F of s. So, you have to multiply s by capital F and subtract f of 0. f of 0 is a constant. There is no s or t there. f of t equal to 0 here actually, f of 0. So, this is what is the formula. So, try to understand what does it say. If I know Laplace transform of ft and value of, I know f also. So, I can find its value at 0. Then, I can find Laplace transform of f dash using this formula. So, if I know Laplace transform of f, I know how to find Laplace transform of f dash. That is what this formula tells, essentially. Note, it is by a multiplication means multiplication by s at 0 okay that is there so if you another way to look at it is if you pull out dash from inside the laplace if i pull out this dash the dash will become s so it is s l f t minus f0 this minus f0 also will come so this is a very important formula in fact this is the reason why laplace studied these laplace so called laplace transforms now so we have basically what we have what have we done? We have written Laplace of derivative in terms of Laplace of the function. Uh, there aren't very many easy examples to show you, but there's one cheating kind of example. I'll show you that. So this could come in the example. Deduce Laplace of cos t from Laplace of sin t. That means if I know Laplace of sine of t, can you tell me what is Laplace of cos t? That's written on your, you can see it on your screen, cos t is d by d, what is this one, I've written wrong here, this is not d by ds, uh, d by dt, sorry, 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 uh, this is again a typo, I'm sorry, d by dt of sin t is cos t, derivative of sin t is cos t. So what it says is, I want to deduce Laplace of cos from Laplace of sine. Okay, cos t, that means I know Laplace of cos t. I want to find out Laplace of sine t. I observe that d by dt of sine t is cos t. Why do I want this? I want d by dt of cos t is minus sine t. I think there is a small mistake here. Uh, is it? d by d no 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 oh so okay deduce laplace of cos t from laplace of sin t that means i know laplace of sin t i want to deduce laplace of cos t so i observe that d by dt of sin t is cos t therefore laplace of cos t that is laplace of d by dt of sin t is it's like f dash of sin t means sin it's a derivative of sin t so if I take out dash, that means s, it will become s l of sin t minus f of 0. f of 0 is sin 0. Sin 0 is 0. So, it goes away. So, s into l of sin t. 
I know like L of sin t is 1 by s square plus a square. So L of cos t is s by s square plus a square, which tallies with what we knew before from the table of Laplace transforms. This is a very cheating kind of example. It's not a good example. Where this is actually useful, I'll show you later. That is where it's very important. Right now, this is just to understand what this formula is. If you know Laplace of Ft, I know Laplace of F dash of t by this formula. So here, I know Laplace of sin t. How do I know? I have not told you. From that, I can deduce Laplace of cos t. That's all it is. In fact, even more important is, I will use this repeatedly. That means, I if I know, uh, let's try to understand philosophically. I know Laplace of Ft, I can find Laplace of F dash T. Now I know Laplace of F dash T, I can find Laplace of F double dash T. I'll just take derivative once more. So that means I'll do some appropriate manipulation, which is what is written here. L of F dash T is S into L of F T minus F zero. Twice if I use, I'll get this. L of F double dash T is S L F dash minus F dash zero. It's like you take F dash T equal to G T. Then this is nothing but G dash T. L of G dash T is S L G minus G of zero. G is F dash. So I'll get L of F dash minus F dash of zero. Now L of F dash itself is this, which means you substitute this once more for L of F dash. You use this, then you'll get S into so you will get this s square Laplace of f minus s of f0 minus f dash 0. If you don't understand it, it's not difficult. It's very straightforward. You're just using Laplace of derivative once more. That's all you're doing. Laplace of f dash, you're using it twice to get Laplace of f double dash. In short, you must remember this formula s square lf minus sf0 minus f dash 0. So remember, this is not f0 now. f0 is here, f dash 0, because the function had itself had become f dash. OK, so in general, if you want, you can write this formula. Nth derivative of f, its Laplace transform is given by this. Normally, we want, from examination point of view, we won't need this. We will need this. Very rarely, you might, you might require a third derivative. Otherwise, uh, to second order is what we will want for examination point of view. So in general, Laplace of f and t is s power n Laplace of f t minus s power n minus 1 f0 etc etc up to n minus 1 th derivative of z f at 0. That's what I'll get. Let's not bother about this general formula. This is what you need to know. L of f double dash is n equal to 2 here. I get L of f double dash t is S square LF, S square Laplace of F minus S into small f at 0 minus F dash at 0. Let us see why this is useful. This is the main thing why we study Laplace transform. Solution of linear differential equations with constant coefficients. These are called initial value problems. Means I know initial condition. That means I know F0, F dash 0, whatever it means. I'll show you a few problems, then you'll understand. These solutions of this is shorter than any method which we have learned till now. You must have learned various methods how to solve solution of linear differential equations with constant coefficients. They were initial value problems, as I said, boundary value problems. Uh, so they are the things which you must have seen. How to solve them is what using Laplace transform is what I'll tell you now. In this, you don't need to find general solutions and then evaluate constant. None of those paraphernalia do you need to do. So uh, let me just recall what are important for this, for applying this particular formula. Important property of Laplace transform is this. Laplace of F dash T is S F S minus F zero. I had written this as L of small f. Now I'll replace it as S capital F of S. Easy to remember. And L of F double dash is S square L of F, which is capital F of S minus S F zero minus F dash zero. Triple derivative also you won't require, but if you want, you can easily see uh, the connection. Means you can see how the next one comes from the previous one. Uh, 
and there are some notations. I'll develop those notations. Let's go slowly, no problem. L of y, y is a function, y of x. I will denote it as capital Y because you know I, I already have been doing this. L of small f is capital F of s. Basically, I will not write this cap, small s. When I write capital Y, it means Y of s. I will not write it. I will just write capital Y. Like Laplace of small f is capital F. I won't say small f is f of uh, domain, uh, small f. The variable is argument is T there and capital F argument is S. I won't, I will hide that. So L of small y is capital Y. And in this notation, this formula, which formula? This formula, L of F dash T is S capital F minus F of zero will become this. L of Y dash T. Now Y, I'm, I'm cleverly throwing away Y, uh, sorry, F and replacing it by F for Y. Instead of F, I'm writing Y, that's all, nothing else. Easy, because this is the notation we use for differential equations. We don't use F, so I'm translating this notation. So it might look a bit, what am I trying to do? Why am I wasting time? But don't worry, just be with me. L of Y dash T is S capital Y. This is S Laplace of Y, which I'll denote it by capital Y, as I told here, minus Y of zero. This is the formula, L of Y dash T I won't even write this t, L of y dash is S capital Y minus Y zero. Similarly, L of Y double dash is a square capital Y minus S Y zero Y dash zero. Very often I will not write this S. And similarly, L of triple derivative of Y is a cube capital Y. I Just for initial time, I have written capital Y of S. Gradually, I'll drop this S. So s cube y minus s square small y zero minus s y dash zero minus y double dash zero. Note the first term is all which has capital Y. All others will have small y. Means first term is all that has Laplace transform. Others will have the function itself. So keep that in mind. So let us see how to solve a very easy equation, very easy differential equation dy by dt plus y is sin t. This is a differential equation. Uh, try to recall what do I mean by solve this? Solve this means you have to find a function y of t. See here t is the independent variable. We are all just notational inconvenience or notational convenience will change. Normally you must have been used to writing x as the independent variable and y as the dependent variable. Here suddenly it becomes t because I want to use the notations from Laplace transform. So dy by dt plus y is equal to sine t. Solve this means what? Means find a function y of t such that if I substitute that y of t in this equation, this equation must be true. Give me such a y. That is what is meant by asking to solve dy by dt plus y equal to sin t. Also, in addition to that, I am asking one more condition. That function must be such that whatever, when you solve, you get many such general solution will have many different functions. They are all related, of course. Uh, that Amongst those function, I want to pick that which has y0 is 0. That means at 0, value of y must vanish. That's my condition. So I'm asking, so this is called the initial value problem because I told you initially when t equal to zero, what is the value of y is what I have told you here. I have specified that. I have specified initial value. So that is why initial value means value of y at initial point. Normally t stands for time. So t equal to zero is the initial first time when the time starts. Time starts at t equal to zero. So dy by dt plus y equal to sine d. Solve this means find a function y of t. Please carefully follow this. Solve this means find a function y of t such that if I substitute that here, then this equation must be true. That means find a function such that dy of t by dt, that means its derivative, plus the function itself must give me sign. That's the question. And also initial value. Why your, there will be many such functions which will solve, which will give me, 
many functions which are solutions of this amongst them pick one which has zero value at x equal to t equal to zero that's what solving initial value problem means how to do this you already know you have done in many different ways in your uh, first semester second semester capital D plus 1 y equal to sin D will find auxiliary equation find its roots write the general solution and then find the particular integral integral of 1 by D plus 1 sin T that you must have done one way or you must have also done it directly by integrating what happens like many different methods you must have or by substitution something you will have separation variable all sorts of things you must have done before now I am teaching you yet another way of solving the differential equations you will see in all of those methods you add some calculus here you will see calculus is vanishes means you are teaching a way in which you want to solve differential equations without using calculus without using means Laplace transform we are already all the calculus is hidden there so how do I do this this is take Laplace of this differential equation whatever differential equation is there take Laplace of it differential equation I will rewrite this this is written as y dash plus y equal to sine y, da, y dash means dy by dt so y dash plus y equal to sine t that is the differential equation take Laplace of this that y dash plus y equal to sine t that means Laplace of y dash plus y is Laplace of sine t now Laplace is a linear operator so Laplace of y dash plus y is Laplace of y dash plus Laplace of y equal to Laplace of sin t I know 1 by s square plus 1 carefully understand what I am doing this differential equation is nothing but y dash plus y equal to sin t now I take Laplace of this differential equation that means Laplace of y dash plus y equal to Laplace of sin t this means Laplace of y dash plus Laplace of y is 1 by s square plus 1 because like uh, Laplace of sin t is 1 by s square plus 1 and here I use linearity of Laplace Laplace of this plus this is Laplace of this plus Laplace of this now I know a formula Laplace of y dash is s into capital Y capital Y means Laplace of y minus y of 0 plus L of y means capital Y just notation you see just write in a different notation you will get an easy solution you don't have to do any calculus is equal to 1 by s square plus 1 this right hand side I'll return as it is so s capital Y minus y of 0 plus y is 1 by s square plus 1 this I'll rewrite you can take y common from the first and the third term you will get s plus 1 times y and it's given that y of 0 is 0 so this term goes away so I get s plus 1 capital Y is 1 by s square plus 1 which means capital Y is 1 by s plus 1 into s square plus 1. Try to understand what I did here. You started with the differential equation. I'll write it, just rewrite it as y dash plus y equal to sine t. If I take Laplace of this differential equation, I'll get Laplace of y dash plus y equal to Laplace of sine t. I know Laplace of sine t. I use linearity of Laplace transform and rewrite this as Laplace of y dash plus Laplace of y. In this Laplace of y, I am denoting it by capital Y. Laplace of y dash, I know a formula. It is nothing but sy minus y of 0. That's the formula which I told you in the beginning. Here it is. Laplace of y dash is s capital Y minus y of 0. So that's what I have used here. Laplace of y dash is s capital Y minus y of 0. And ly, Laplace of y is capital Y. So sy minus y of 0 plus y is 1 by s square plus 1. y of 0 is given to me, given to be equal to 0 to me. That means initial value of y, I know it is 0. So here this 0 vanishes. 0 vanishes means y of 0 vanishes. So I'm left with sy plus y. I'll write it as s plus 1 times y, which means capital Y, which is the Laplace transform of small y, which is what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find a small y. I'm trying to find a function which satisfies this differential equation. So Laplace transform of that function I have found. Now I want to find the function. How do I do it? You know it. You have done it. Find inverse Laplace transform of this. So now take inverse Laplace transform. So 
uh, got capital Y, this means L of small y is equal to 1 by S plus 1 into S square plus 1. So I want to find inverse Laplace of this. Small y is inverse Laplace of capital Y, which is inverse Laplace of 1 by S plus 1 into S square plus 1. You do it in whichever way you want. If you want to use partial fractions, go ahead and do it. But I will use convolution theorem. Oh, okay. I'm not using convolution theorem. Here I'm actually going to use convolution theorem to be easier. But here I seem to have done it using partial fractions. So I'll just stick to that. So I have three, uh, I will have three terms if I want to break it up to the partial fractions. This I told you when I taught you how to find inverse Laplace terms. So A by S plus 1, B by B S plus C by S square plus 1. So you find out B and C, you will get B is 1 and C is also 1 and A, sorry, B is minus 1, C is 1 and A is 1. So all this we are done, I will not repeat it here. Basically break this up into partial fractions, that's something to do with Laplace transform, that's what to do with your algebra manipulation. How do I write this as partial fractions, 1 by S plus 1 into S square plus 1. So A by S plus 1 plus in the numerator B, capital B S plus C divided by S square plus 1. Now evaluate A, B and C use by choosing cleverly values for S. So you will get that and collecting the coefficients and the usual things, whatever we have done before. So now Laplace inverse of this is same as Laplace inverse of this. Now Laplace inverse is also a linear operator. That means Laplace inverse of all this is equal to Laplace inverse of this plus Laplace inverse of this plus Laplace inverse of this, which is what I have done. Laplace inverse of 1 by s plus 1 is e power minus t. Laplace inverse of s by s square plus 1 is cos t. Laplace inverse of 1 by s square plus 1 is sin t. I will put it as a half here. Where did this half come from? These are the coefficients. When you evaluate a, b, c, you will get this half. Means when you write this as partial fractions, a is, I told 1, it's wrong, it's half. b is minus half. c is half. So you do that part, but break this up into partial fractions. So I can pull out half and I get this. So inverse Laplace transform I found, but this is why over my question is over. My uh, I mean answer to my question is over. This is the function y is equal to half e power minus t minus cos t plus sin t. You can check that this is true. Means if you take dy by dt and add it to y, I must get sin t. Will I get it? Just check that. Ah, so here checking also is done here. Check that this is indeed, you don't have to do it in the exam, but this will help you to understand that this is indeed correct what we have done. So yt is this. This is what y equal to this means. y is a function of t. So y of t is half e power minus t minus cos t plus psi t. This part you don't have to do in the exam, but I'm just telling you for your understanding and confirming that we have done it correctly. y of t is half e power minus t minus cos t plus psi t. So what is y dash t? Half will remain like that. e power minus t derivative is minus e power minus t. Uh, derivative of minus cos t is sin t. Derivative of sin t is cos t. Now you add these two. These two will get cancelled. Uh, then these two will get cancelled. I am left with half sin t plus half sin t which is sin t. Ah, this is what I wanted. Derivative of y plus y is sin t. So we have verified that this is indeed this is indeed the solution. So I, note that we never use calculus anywhere. In this, we are not used calculus in the solution. How do I find? So let me recall quickly so that you understand the advantage of this method. Given a differential equation, and an initial value, which means given an initial value problem, how to solve this? Rewrite this in terms of y dash. So this is y dash plus y equal to sin t. Take Laplace transform. I'm not, doing, I'm not doing any calculus anywhere. No differentiation, no integration. L of y dash plus y is L y dash plus L y is Laplace of sin t. I use the table of uh, Laplace transforms. 1 by s square plus 1. Then I know this formula L of y dash is s y minus y zero. No calculus. This is just the formula. So sy minus y0 plus capital Y is equal to 1 by s square plus 1. Simplify this, solve for capital Y. That means solve for the Laplace transform of Y. I'll get this. 
Now you try to find the inverse Laplace. You can use convolution theorem. It will come very easily, but I will not bother about it. I seem to have done it using partial fractions. So if you use partial fractions, again, no calculus anywhere here. If you use partial uh, fraction, this is what you will get as y of t. So that's it. I never used any calculus in this whole process. You see, all I used was linearity of Laplace transform, formula for ly dash in terms of ly, which is uh, capital Y. And then I found, found inverse Laplace transform using uh, partial fractions. And I get the solution. So no calculus anywhere. That is the advantage of this Laplace transform. No calculus means calculus is hidden in finding the Laplace transform of given function, finding the inverse Laplace transform of given function, finding that how derivative of y, Laplace of derivative of y is related to Laplace of y. Their calculus is hidden there. But right now it's only front end, just the two lists, those few formula, I have to put them together. And I checked also that this is solution. Let us try to see one more example. Here I'm taking a second order differential equation. d square y by dx square minus 2y, 2 dy by dx plus y equal to e power x such that when x is 0, y is 2 and dy by dx is minus 1. See here, cleverly, I mean sometimes we will ask such questions. So that's why I have given this here. Independent variable is x here, not t. It's okay. You can call it whatever you want. The answers are not going to change. So this initial value problem says, what does it solve means? Solve means you find a function y of x such that if I substitute that y of x in this, this equation must be true. And at x equal to 0, y of x must, y of 0 must be 2. And dy by dx at that same x equal to 0 must be minus 1. These are the initial conditions. Note, if our degree is 2, I need two conditions. Like at x equal to 0, I need to know y and dy by dx. Two different things I need to know. In the previous problem, I just needed to know one uh, condition because this is a differential equation of order 1. dy by dx is the highest degree term, highest order derivative. So I needed only one condition, y0 is 0. But here I need two conditions because it has two, the order is two, d square y by dx. So two condition is x equal to zero, y is two, x equal to zero, d y by dx is minus one. So let us take Laplace of this. So this firstly, you write it in terms of y dash, y double dash. So this is y double dash minus two y dash plus y equal to e power x. y double dash minus two y dash plus y equal to e power x. Take Laplace of that differential equation. I'll get Laplace of this, that is Laplace of y double dash, minus twice Laplace of d over dx, that is Laplace of y dash, plus Laplace of y is equal to Laplace of e power x. Now, L y double dash, I have a formula, a square capital Y minus sy0 minus y dash 0. How do I know this? This is from the formula. I told you the formula right in the beginning, that how derivative of a function is related, uh, Laplace of derivative of a function is related to Laplace of the function. This is, this comes from that. Similarly, L y dash is S y minus y zero. Two, I'll keep it outside. And L y is capital Y. The whole thing is Laplace of e power x. You can, don't ask me where, what happened to t, it has become x. That's okay, it doesn't matter to me. So L of e power x is one by s minus one. L of e power t is also 1 by s minus 1. L of e power anything you write it is 1 by s minus 1. As long as that is the independent variable. So sometimes we'll use x, sometimes we'll use t. Don't worry, don't get confused too much about it. So L of y double dash is a square y minus s y is a 0 minus y dash 0 minus twice L y dash is s y minus y 0. So twice s y minus y 0 plus L of small y means capital Y, which is equal to S minus 1. Now, you collect terms so that I can solve for capital Y. So, you see, firstly, S square Y, that the only one term is there, minus 2S plus 1. So, you have to use these uh, initial conditions. At X equal to 0, Y is 2. So, this becomes 2. Y of 0 is 2. So, it will become minus 2S y dash 0 is minus 1. So y dash 0 is minus 1 means this will become plus 1. 
please understand this y is 0 is 2 at x equal to 0 y is 2 means y of 0 is 2 similarly dy by dx is minus 1 means dy y dash at 0 is minus 1 so that's what i have substituted that here s square y minus 2s plus 1 minus 2sy y 0 is uh, 2 so uh, minus 2 into minus 2 will become plus 4 and capital Y, I'll write it as it is Laplace of small y uh, is equal to 1 by S minus 1. That is basically Laplace of E power X. So this I'll again uh, rewrite it in a, you know, I'll simplify this. So I'll get out, uh, how did 4 become 5 here? Uh, there's some problem. No, I'll put Y's together. So S square Y minus 2 s some problem here i have seen to have written wrong mm, i'll take capital y terms capital y terms is s square minus 2s plus 1 correct there's no, nothing wrong here so capital y comes in three terms one is s square y one is minus 2sy another is capital y so if i take these three together s square minus 2s plus 1 whole into y minus 2s i'll write it as it is plus 1 plus 4 which is 5 which is equal to 1 by s minus 1 so what i'm trying to do here is solve for capital y that's what i'm doing here so I, i'll get this so this i'm rewriting this this is s minus 1 whole square remember s square minus 2s plus 1 is s minus 1 whole square capital y i write it as it is this is twice s minus 1 plus 3 by s minus 1. Why am I writing it like this? Uh, huh. Because you see, this is the kind of manipulations you have to do. These are algebraic manipulations. Instead of horrible calculus, we will do some horrible algebra to solve this problem. So basically, I want to write capital Y equal to what? So I am trying to do that. s minus 1 whole square Y minus 2 into s minus 1 plus 3 because this is plus 2 plus 3 will become plus 5 which is s minus 1 so rewrite this s minus 1 whole square y is equal to twice s minus 1 minus 3 plus 1 by s plus 1 I've just taken this this side as i told i'm just trying to see what is capital y you can do it directly but if you do it in steps like this you can see you don't have to waste time on trying to write the partial fractions it's easy to write partial fractions just to manipulate here only minus 2s plus 5 i'll write it as minus 2s minus 1 plus 3 why am i doing this because there's a s minus 1 factor sitting here when i divide by finally i'll write capital y equal to something that means i'll divide by s minus 1 whole square so i'm trying to push s minus 1 in each of the numerator term. if you don't understand this don't worry you just solve for capital y you will get some horrible uh, fraction that you convert into partial fraction you will get these three terms that way also you can do so capital y is 1 by uh, sorry 2 by s minus 1 minus 3 by s minus 1 whole square plus 1 by s minus 1 whole cube here how did i get that i'm telling you this is what i got from the previous step s minus 1 whole square y minus 2s plus 5 equal to 1 by s minus 1 that's what i written here now this i'll break it up 5 i will break it up as 3 plus 2 so 1, 2, I'll push it, push it with 2s in which I'll get minus 2 common and s minus 1 plus 3. Yeah, right hand side, I'll return as it is. So now I'll push this to right hand side. So s minus 1 whole square capital Y is equal to 2s minus 1 minus 3 because this was minus. So when it comes this side, it becomes plus. This is plus. When it comes this side, it becomes minus plus 1 by s minus 1. But then capital Y is equal to divide by s minus 1 whole square. So if I divide this by s minus 1 whole square, 2 by s minus 1 minus 3 by s minus 1 whole square plus 1 by s minus 1 whole cube. Why do I want this? Because these are inverse derivative, inverse Laplace transform is easy to find for these. So why capital Y is this? So small y is inverse Laplace of this. Inverse Laplace of this is inverse Laplace of 1 by inverse Laplace is also a linear operator. 
So inverse Laplace of 1 by s minus 1 minus 3 times inverse Laplace of 1 by s minus 1 whole square plus Laplace inverse of 1 by s minus 1 whole cube. All I have done is take inverse Laplace of this minus inverse Laplace of this plus inverse Laplace of this. How do I know? What is inverse Laplace of x minus 1? I know that it is e to the power of p. Here x is the variable. So I'll write e power x. That's what it is. 2 outside it will be written like that. How do, do I know inverse Laplace of 1 by s minus 1 whole square? Of course I know because this is of the form f of s minus a where a is 1 which means it is e to the power of x x into e power minus x. That's what this inverse Laplace transform is because I'm using shifting formula here. That's what I have done here. And here again I will replace it by here there is a square. So it's like 1 by s square. 1 by s square inverse Laplace is 1 uh, 1 by s cube is what you see here. I mean, it's actually s minus 1. So forget about s minus 1 because then I can take out e power x. So it's like trying to find what is Laplace inverse of 1 by s cube. Laplace inverse of 1 by s cube is nothing but 1 by 2 x square. t square but I will write it as x square. So here also similar thing. 1 by, I will try to find what is the inverse Laplace of 1 by s square. Even though it is s minus 1, it doesn't matter. s minus 1, I will replace whatever Laplace I get by shifting formula. I will write it, whatever our answer is, into e power x. So, this is the same as Laplace inverse of 1 by s square is nothing but uh, 3 times, uh, 3, uh, uh, 1 by s square is x. So, I get minus 3 e power x, x. And here I get half e power x, x square. This is like what we have done before. Inverse Laplace transforms. So this is the answer. Um, that's it. This is the solution. Y of x is 2 e power x minus 3 e power x, x, x e power x plus half x square e power x. That's the solution. So this way also we have solved a differential equation without any calculus. What did we do here? Here you took Laplace of this whole thing and solve for capital Y in a nice way. That's all this process is. Once you solve for capital Y, you take inverse Laplace of this. So inverse Laplace is also a linear operator. So you will get inverse Laplace of the whole thing is sum of inverse Laplace of each of them. And inverse Laplace of this is, I know how to find that. I know how to find this. I know how to find this. I used shifting formula here. That's why I said this is a bit tricky. Uh, but you have to observe that. You, you know it's not difficult to find inverse Laplace of 1 by s minus 1 whole square. So essentially what Laplace transform has done is derivatives, it converts it into multiplication. That is what uh, you see. I'll just take a break and tell you from beginning. Not the whole thing, but I just, now that you have seen few examples, you should be uh, easier for you to understand this. When you take Laplace transform of a derivative, it converts derivative into a multiplication problem. It just multiplies s by Laplace transform of small y. So it's a multiplication. That's what uh, uh, that's what we have exploited here. It's because it's multiplication s into y. Then I solve for capital Y. That's just an algebraic expression. So Y itself is something a rational algebraic function. It's Laplace inverse. Again, I can find using the usual techniques of Laplace transform. So that's what I have done in both the problems. In this problem also, it's the same thing. If I have Y double dash, I'll get S square. Of course, S also I'll get, but S square capital Y is what I'll get. So that's what I have exploited all over here. So inverse Laplace. And finally, by taking inverse Laplace, I get the function. Let us try to see one more example. d square y by dx square plus 9y is cos 2x. As you see here, it's a degree 2. So I need to know two conditions. y of 0 is 1 and y of pi by 2 is minus 1. This is given to me, initial value problem. So I want a solution. I want to solve this means I want to look for a function which when I satisfy, which when I substitute in this differential equation, it must be true. And that function must satisfy these two conditions. y of 0 is 1 and y of pi by 2 is minus 1. So these are the two things which I wanted to satisfy. Uh, 
so let's assume here you see they are given y0 and y pi by 2. They are not given y dash 0, which is what I wanted. So what I will do is I'll, let's assume y dash 0 is A. Doesn't matter. I need two conditions basically. Either y0 and y dash 0 is given or y0 and y pi by 2 is given. I am showing you how to attack this problem. Let us assume y dash 0 is some, some number A. I don't know what it is. So take Laplace transform of this. I will get L of y double dash plus 9 times L of y is L of cos 2x. That's what I am just taking Laplace of the whole of differential equation. That's easy. So now L of y double dash is s square y minus sy0 minus y dash 0. And this I will write as it is 9y which is equal to Laplace of cos 2x is s by s square plus 4. Don't worry about x or t. And this I will rewrite. y dash 0 I have assumed it to be a. y0 they have given it to be equal to 1. So I substitute that y0 is 1. So I will get one s term here. y dash 0 is a. So I will write a here. So y terms I will combine capital Y terms. s square plus 9 capital Y minus s because y0 is 1 and y dash 0 is a. I will write it as it is minus a equal to s by s square plus 4. This means capital Y is equal to this I'll return as it is s by s square plus 4 and I'll take s plus a to this side. So minus s minus a to this side I'll get s plus a. Divide everything by s square plus 9 I'll get these three terms. Try to understand of course you can simplify all this and write capital Y equal to but that's used that means it's more work to do partial fractions later which will end up which, with which you will end up with the same expression. So I am avoiding doing that partial fraction by cleverly manipulating here. So here I will retain them as it is. S I will retain as it is. A I will retain as it is. And I will take it this side and divide by S square plus 9. So I will get three terms here. A by S square plus 9 plus 1 by 5 S by S square plus 4. How did I get 5 there? Uh, I made a mistake. I don't know what is happening here. Uh, how did I get this? A by S square plus 9. That is okay. That I get it because of this term. A by S square plus 9. And then I will get S by S square plus 9. That term is here. But where did this 4 by 5 come from? I don't see where this 4 by 5 comes. There is some mistake I think. If I take it this side, uh, this is wrong. So let's check this. Uh, I don't think that is correct. So it must be typo while uh, correcting, while uh, copying pasting. So let us check this once more carefully. I'm sorry. So, but anyway, uh, little bit mistakes happen when I try to solve these kind of things. So capital Y is S by S square plus 4 that is this term so there is no minus 5 1 by 5 there I don't know where I got this from and this one is oh no 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 it's correct it's correct sorry I have used partial fractions there and I have not uh, written that okay okay 1 by 5 okay here I have not explicitly mentioned how I have written partial fractions so please you do it at home this is correct what I have written is correct no problem this is correct uh, so uh, okay I'll explain what's happening here so you write capital Y is equal see the, you have a term x square plus 9 into s square plus 4 you get in the denominator so you have to write its partial fractions which will become a largest uh, partial fraction you please do it you know how to find capital A, capital B, capital C, all those things. So you do that by choosing clever, by choosing values of S cleverly and you will end up with this partial fraction. This I think I am correct. So just go, go through capital Y is equal to A by S square plus 9. That is easy to see and you will get S by S square plus 4 and S by S square plus 9 but with appropriate coefficients 1 by 5 and 4 by 5. Correct. This is correct. Uh, so this is capital Y. So now you take its inverse Laplace transform, 
because each of these inverse Laplace is easy to see. A by S square plus 9, S by S square plus 4, S by S square plus 9. Each of them inverse Laplace is easy. This is A by 3 sin 3x, 1 by 5, that's outside coefficient anyway, linearity I'm using, cos 2x and cos 3x, 4 by 5 is as it is. Now, this is y of x. What is it that I was given? I was given y of 0 is 1 and y of pi by 2 is minus 1. I have not yet used this condition. But I already found y of 0 in terms of a. So, I will substitute pi by 2 here. If I substitute pi by 2, I will get a equal to 4 by 5. y of pi by 2 is given to be something here. But how much it is given? It is given to be minus 1. So, this whole thing will be equal to pi by uh, minus 1 if you put pi by 2. If you put pi by 2 here, 3 pi by 2, sine 3 pi by 2 is 0. Uh, correct. Sine 3 pi by 2, pi by 2, 2 pi by 2, 3 pi by 2 is 0. This is 0. Cos 2 pi by 2, that is cos pi is minus 1. Cos 3 pi by 2 is, uh, cos, you know, I am making mistake. Sine 3 pi by 2 is 1. Sorry, sine 3 pi by 2 is minus 1 pi by 2, 2 pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, sine is minus 1. So, sine 3, I mean you should substitute this, x equal to pi by 2 here, you will get this answer. Sine 3 pi by 2 which is minus 1, so minus a by 3 and cos 2 pi by 2 means cos pi which is minus 1, cos pi is minus 1, so minus 1 by 5, cos 3 pi by 2 is 0, so this term will become 0, so a you will get 4 by 5, that's correct. Uh, so, please check these kind of things. I might have made a mistake, but I don't think I have made a mistake here. Well, the whole thing is equal to minus 1. Just put x equal to pi by 2 here. So, y pi by 2 is minus 1. Minus 1 is equal to sine 3 pi by 2 is minus 1. So, this is minus a by 3 plus, not plus here, it will become minus because if you put pi by 2 here, cos pi is minus 1. So, minus 1 by 5. So, minus 1 is equal to minus a by 3 minus uh, 1 by 5. So, solve for a, you will get it to be equal to 4 by 5. Check. Substitute this in this a value of a I have found now. So, I substitute a is 4 by 5, it will become 4 by 15 sin 3x plus 1 by 5 cos 2x plus 4 by 5 cos 3x. So, this is how if you are given instead of y dash 0, if you are given y at another point, this is like a boundary value problem. This is boundary value problem. You are given value of y at two distinct points and without giving y dash. If y dash is given directly, you can substitute it here. But if y dash is not given, don't bother. Put it equal to some value and proceed with the solution. You will get that solution in terms of that assumed value. Now you use the value of the function at some other point is given. So you evaluate small a. That's what is done here. One more example, let us try to solve this. T y double dash plus 2 y dash plus T y equal to cos T. Given that y is 0 is 1, uh, there is some problem given 2 degree 2 and I have given only one condition. I hope I have not made a mistake. Let us check what happens. So maybe one more condition must be given or solution will be in terms of something else. Um, it's not clear. Let us check this. So, let us check this. So, this is degree 2 equation. T y double dash plus 2 y dash plus T y equal to cos T given y 0 is 1. One more thing must be given. Take Laplace transform of this equation. That will give me Laplace of this whole thing is Laplace of this. Now, use linearity and see that Laplace of this is T y double dash Ah, it is ty. That is why this will work. Okay, okay. Even with one condition, it will work because this is not really linear differential equation in the sense, not constant coefficient. It has a independent variable term coming up here. So, L ty double dash minus L of 2y dash plus L of ty equal to L of cos t. Now, see what is L of ty double dash. This is where you need to explicitly see the formula. If you multiply by t, then you take derivative of L y double dash. You remember L of t f t is minus d by ds L of f t. So here f is y double dash. So I get this. And L of 2 y dash, I, this is usual. I'll 
So I just explained to you this from this step to this step. L Laplace of T Y double dash is minus D by DS L of Y double dash. I know these are a bit dirty and sort of ugly. What is this formula? But this is what Laplace transform manipulation means. You need to know all this formula and chuck chuck you have to keep implementing them. So L of T Y double dash understand this multiplication by T independent variable is I, if I know Laplace tensor y double dash, then I know Laplace tensor of t y double dash. How do I know? Take Laplace transform of y double dash and differentiate with respect to s and change the sign. That's what I have done here. So the rest will continue as it is. 2 into L of y dash. Uh, here p into y is again minus d by ds L of y is L of cos t. And this is for L of y double dash, I know this is the uh, condition. This is the uh, this is how Laplace of y double dash behaves. Laplace of y double dash is this is the formula. S square y minus y zero minus y dash zero. It is d minus d by ds of this whole thing. And two l y dash. I'll write it as it is. Uh, to uh, no, I won't write it as it is. L y dash. This is the formula. S y minus y zero. So two I have written as it is and minus d by ds of ly, that is ly is capital Y, so d by ds of capital Y is equal to Laplace of cos t means s by s square plus 1, because Laplace of cos is s by s square plus 1. Now you evaluate this, when you differentiate this, what do you, so this is, I have rewritten that, minus d, whatever is here, I have rewritten it here, that's all. You see here minus d by ds of s square y minus s y zero minus y dash zero minus d by ds s square y minus s y zero minus y dash zero and twice s y minus y zero twice s y minus y zero d by ds of capital y d by ds of capital y equal to s by s square plus one. This one will try to evaluate. How do I want to evaluate? Differentiate this with respect to s. I will get what. You use product rule minus I'll keep it out d by ds of s square y is you retain s square and differentiate with respect to y so s square dy by ds plus 2sy derivative of s square is 2s into y now s y dash 0 if you differentiate with respect to x I'll just get y is 0 so I kept it here d by ds of y dash 0 is 0 because this is some constant. I don't know what it is. It's some constant independent of s. So when I differentiate this, this will become 0. So I have not written that. So this term derivative is here. And then I'll write the other things as it is. 2sy minus 2y0. 2 into y0. I have written it here. And d by ds of capital Y, I write it as it is. d by ds of capital Y. This is equal to s by s square plus 1. Basically, I'm trying to get at y. So let us see. I can't get at y. I can get at dy by ds. So here dy by ds, if I regroup this, y0 is 1. So I'll put this equal to 1. This is equal to 1. 1 minus 2 minus 1. So you do that kind of thing. You will get dy by ds. Easy. And 2sy will get cancelled. Here is minus 2sy. And here is plus 2sy. They will get cancelled. So I'll get dy by ds is equal to this expression minus 1 by s square plus 1 minus s by s square plus 1 whole square. So here you see you have to divide by s square plus 1 everywhere. You carry out this manipulation. I will not give you too much of explanation here, but what I have done is correct. So I know dy by ds now. Now take inverse Laplace transform of this. When I take inverse Laplace transform of this, I'll get L inverse of dy by ds is L inverse of this whole thing because dy by ds is what is this. So this this L inverse of dy by ds is L inverse of this whole expression. Uh, so that means L in, use linearity, so L inverse of this minus L inverse of this. L inverse of this is sin t, L inverse of this is t sin t. Again, I have to use that shifting formula. L inverse of dy by ds is t times y. This is a tricky problem. I'm not sure whether they will ask in the exam, but 
very much in your syllabus. It grandly combines all the horrible formula which you have enunciated from beginning. So L inverse of dy by ds is ty. Why? Because L of ty is minus ds by dt. So all there is a negative sign which has come all over here. So y is equal to half, I mean you solve for y, you divide by t, uh, you will get half uh, into, well, what have I done here, oh it takes sin t common out, t y is this, so 1 by 2 t it must be there, I, I have forgotten a t here, uh, divide by t, that is there. Uh, so just check this last one you just divide by t the whole thing you will get t by uh, sin t by t and uh, here t gets cancelled i just get half sin t so there is a t here uh, I, know, I missed that out so please keep that uh, in mind so that completes our course on uh, laplace transform i understand this last question is a bit tricky but i wanted to show you which involves all the formula we have seen through this course uh, so this is even though one condition is given i can solve it because this is not really a linear differential equation with constant coefficients that y double dash y dash zero thing gets cancelled it's a clever thing that's all it doesn't happen always and uh, i thank you i think that's the end of it yeah thanks for the for listening to this course for i hope i have made some difference and you have understood some mathematics and uh, if you have any doubts, please use this uh, uh, email address. Uh, uh, feel free to send me any mail anytime. I will respond to your doubts. Thank you. And uh, I thank uh, uh, e-learning center of uh, VTU at Mysore for having given me this opportunity to share uh, my perspective on this Laplace transform, vector algebra, vector calculus, solid geometry, all these things. Thank you. I hope uh, I made some sense. And remember this email address. Uh, please send me any queries you have. This course is basically, you know, I'm not really dealt too many details of Laplace transforms and things like that, or even vector calculus. Everything has been geared towards examination. Just for it. what is needed for examination, I'll try to condense that. Uh, I hope it is useful. Uh, in any case, you want to know more details or if you something is not clear, feel free to ask me at this email. Thank you. I will stop here and wishing you all the best for your examination.